All right, so next we have Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, or AFCI, and I'll be perfectly honest, this is one that I've kind of been looking forward to. Everybody has uh, strong feelings about Arc Fault Circuit Interrupters, so let's take a look and see what it is. It's a device that provides protection for arc faults by recognizing the unique characteristics of an arc fault and de-energizing the circuit when one is detected. Okay, so looking at our clear circuit breaker here, everything on the left is just your regular old thermal magnetic circuit breaker that, uh, that pretty much every molded case circuit breaker is going to have. It's the stuff on the right here that makes this an AFCI. And the most obvious uh, part is the circuit board that we can see back there. So what does that circuit, that circuit board do? Well, it recognizes the unique characteristics of an arc fault and it shuts off the circuit when it sees one. So how exactly would you sense the unique characteristics associated with an arcing fault and, and how would you recognize them and, and, and what makes those characteristics unique? Well, basically we look at the sine wave. Uh, in an arc fault circuit interrupter, there is essentially an onboard oscilloscope that reads the sine wave. So a typical AC sine wave looks like this over here on the left, where it's just barely little blips up and down, but it's predictable, right? Nice and round sinusoidal waveform, 60 hertz or maybe 50 if you're in the UK or somewhere else. Um, but it's, it's predictable and it's nice and round and sinusoidal. Uh, if a motor starts, that, uh, that sine wave would get larger, right? It would have a larger amplitude for a minute, but then it goes back to normal and it's a predictable sine wave. It's big, but it's not really unusual. An arcing fault looks like this photograph here. This is showing an arcing fault. And what the unique characteristic is that they're talking about is the fact that it will peak and then it will go normal. And we call that shouldering. So it'll peak, it'll shoulder, it'll peak, it'll shoulder, it'll peak again, and it'll shoulder, and it'll peak. So it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, a, an intermittent thing, right? It, it's arcing several times and that's what creates the hazard. So not every arc is necessarily a hazard and that's where this gets really tricky. I'm sure that you've, uh, you've turned on a light switch in the dark and you see a little blue pop behind the wall plate, you know, and it's just tiny and it's gone and, and that's a, a series arc, isn't it? Now that's not a dangerous event, so we don't want an arc fault to trip every time that type of thing happens. So we do have to recognize what an arc is and when it's dangerous. So the way an arc fault works, an arc fault circuit interrupter, is it's counting how many of these peaks happen. And what it's looking for is eight arcing half cycles in 30 cycles. So in half of a second, if we see eight of those happen, then we know that that is a dangerous arcing fault. But it's only dangerous if it exceeds a certain amount of current. If there's, you know, essentially no current flowing, then there's no danger. So how much current needs to flow before this is problematic? Well, if I'm arcing in parallel, hot to neutral, we're looking for a 75 amp arc that happens eight times in one half of a second. So the AFCI is going to try to look for arc, for, uh, for arcing faults who have, that have a peak of 75 amps and if there's eight of those in 30 cycles it's going to open if it's a parallel arc. If it's a series arc, a wire arcing to itself, then it's going to look for the same number of arcs in the same duration of time but it's going to look for it in at five amperes. You're not going to get a 75 amp series arc unless you have a circuit that's rated over 75 amps, right? Because the load limits how much arcing you can have in series. So where would you have a 5 amp series arc? Well, in a cord, it would have to be a pretty big appliance. You know, maybe something like a refrigerator during startup might pull 5 amps, and if it was arcing to itself, then that would create a dangerous condition. Uh, other than that, we're probably looking at wiring inside the walls when it comes to series arcs of 5 amperes or more. There's not a lot of appliances that we have in a house uh, at 120 volts, 15 and 20 amps, the pull five amps. So usually an AFCI is looking for the wire, for the an, an arc that's happening inside of the walls, or in a two wire cord, usually a parallel arc. It does it does sense series arcs as well. Ever since two thousand eight, it does. But it's more in the business of looking at arcs inside the walls, 
counting how much, uh, how many of them happen, looking at the current of those arcs, and opening in the event of an arc fault. My friends at Eaton, several years ago, in fact, back when AFCIs were first coming out, uh, they sent me uh, kind of a cool package that, that they use for teaching. It came in this unbelievably awesome case, like an Altoid, you know, mints kind of case. And uh, opened it up and it had a couple of circuit breakers inside of it that were clear. And uh, it's interesting to note that there's different components in these two different AFCI circuit breakers. So this one right here, and I, I don't know if this is the BR or the CH, uh, they, they're both eaten, I don't remember which is which, but right here where my finger is, you'll notice that, that white component. And you'll notice that in this one, it does not exist. And what that is, is a CT for a GFPE relay. And it's looking for, it's a ground fault protection of equipment and it's set to open at about 30 milliamps. Now, AFCIs never required GFPE as part of the device. A lot of manufacturers chose to install that because it was actually the easiest way to pass one of the tests that was part of the product standard up until 2008. Uh, in 2008, when they changed from the branch feeder type to the combination type AFCI, there were other better ways of passing the tests in the product standard than installing GFPE. Now GFPE, I think, is a great feature in a circuit breaker, but let's talk dollars and cents. You know, if you're Eaton, if you're, if you're Square D or somebody, if each of these things costs a dollar and you sell 250,000 breakers, <laughs> well, you know, that's a quarter million dollars of profit. So you can see why the manufacturers don't put anything in there that doesn't have to be in there. Plus, a lot of people complain about the price of AFCIs, and I understand it. You know, it, it all adds up. But do we really want to be putting components in there that aren't required and making the circuit breaker cost more? They're not going to do it on their own dime. So there you go. That is an AFCI. Uh, 210.12 is where you see the code rules for AFCI protection. You also see them in uh, 406.4D4, if I'm not mistaken. It might be D5 for uh, replacement of receptacles. But again, today we're just doing the definitions, and that's the definition of an AFCI. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.